Since you're checking out this video, I assume that you suffer from an autoimmune condition. And if that's the case, then I have some good news for you today. Uh, millions of people suffer from autoimmune conditions that their doctor tells them, we don't know what causes it. Uh, you need to take this expensive pill or this infusion regularly for the rest of your life. You're stuck with this. There's really nothing you can do uh, from a natural standpoint that's going to affect your autoimmune condition whatsoever. Uh, there is no meaningful research out there that shows that eating a specific diet or avoiding certain foods helps autoimmune conditions whatsoever. And so as a physician and scientists, we have to start looking at anecdotal reports. These are reports of just one person or 10 people or 100 people, uh, not controlled research. But when you have enough thousands of people benefiting from eating a certain way, I feel like I'm compelled to share that with you so that you can at least try a 90-day trial of this and see if it doesn't help your autoimmune condition. Uh, I've been doing this uh, online social media thing for about a little over two years now, and I have received reports from thousands of people with autoimmune conditions who say this way of eating has seemingly put my autoimmune condition in remission or has improved the uh, severity and the frequency of flare-ups by 80 or 90%. I cannot ignore the reports from thousands of people with autoimmune conditions. And so that's why today I'm sharing this video with you. The 10 autoimmune conditions that I have received multiple reports from people are the following. Number one, rheumatoid arthritis. Number two, lupus. Number three, psoriasis. Number four, irritable bowel syndrome or disease. Uh, next, Crohn's disease. <clears throat> next, ulcerative colitis. Next, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Next, celiac disease. Next, pernicious anemia. And then finally, multiple sclerosis. Uh, and I haven't just received one or two reports about each of these autoimmune conditions. I have received scores, if not hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of people out there who say, when I eat this way, my symptoms go away. And so if you suffer from one of these 10 autoimmune conditions, I really, really implore you to try 90 days of this diet and see what it does for you. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And in those years, I have taken care of, uh, personally taken care of hundreds of people with autoimmune conditions on this list, and then hundreds of other autoimmune conditions not on this list. And during my early years of practice, I had no idea why people's immune systems decided to just attack parts of their body for seemingly no reason. Uh, through the years of research and reading and being on social media, I have found that there are things in plants, phytates, lectins, oxalates, all these things can cause inflammation in the body and therefore lead to your immune system flaring up and attacking parts of your body. And I think that is part of the answer. I think removing any foods that contain these plant defense things from the diet will calm your immune system down and you will have fewer flares and less severe flares. But lately I have stumbled upon some research that I've never heard talked about before. And I think this is very powerful research. And I think it may well be the smoking gun as to why people seemingly randomly get autoimmune conditions while other people seemingly don't. Now, all doctors and dietitians and most people have heard of amino acids. Amino acids are building blocks for protein. And so in your diet, you, you'll get amino acids from what you eat, and then your body uses these amino acids to build the proteins that your body is made of right? That's simple enough. And most people have heard that there are essential amino acids that our body can't make. We have to actually get them from our diet or we'll get sick, we'll suffer, and we'll die. And then there are the non-essential amino acids that we, we still have to have. They're essential, but the word essential means that our body can actually make them from other amino acids and building blocks. We don't, they're not required to be in our diets. 
But what I recently discovered is there's a whole other genre of amino acids that I'd never heard about, never been taught about, that I think are vitally important for people with autoimmune conditions. And uh, some publications refer to these as non-nutritive amino acids. Some call them non-protein amino acids, and some call them non-proteinogenic amino acids. And they are amino acids, and there's actually a chemical definition for an amino acid. It has a ring and it has an acid attached that, that makes it an amino acid. But I had no idea that there were non-nutritive amino acids. I just never occurred to me. And so in my research on autoimmune conditions, I stumbled across, and there's actually more than 600 different non-nutritive or non-proteinogenic, which means your body cannot use them to make proteins. They all occur in plants. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about two today, but I'm going to link to a ton of research down in the show notes because if you suffer from an autoimmune condition, not only do you want to educate yourself about these non-nutritive amino acids, but you want to educate your doctor as well because your doctor is probably taking care of hundreds, if not thousands of other people with autoimmune conditions. And if these non-protein amino acids are part of the problem, which I think they are, then all the doctors and dietitians need to know about this as quickly as possible. So if you can, if you know someone with an autoimmune condition or a healthcare provider that takes care of people with an autoimmune condition, please share this video with them in a, in a direct message or an email. You're also welcome to share it on your social media, however you think it can help get this message out to the most people with autoimmune conditions. So I want to talk to you about two specific non-nutritive amino acids where they come from, and why I think they're a huge problem for people with autoimmune conditions. Now, first, let's talk about an autoimmune condition. So you want to have a strong, robust immune system. That's good. You have to have that, right? But in some people, it seems like their immune system gets too strong, or at least that's what their doctor tells them. Your immune system's too strong, so we're going to have to put you on this immune-suppressing drug, right? To, to kind of beat your immune system down so it'll stop attacking you. But what if your immune system is not too strong? What if it's just confused by some of your proteins in your body that look a way that they shouldn't look? And that's what I'm about to talk about next. Stick around to the end because I think you're going to be blown away by these two amino acids that you should not have in your body, but that most people get put in their body, put in their proteins by plants. All of the research I've listed below is research from phytochemistry journals, which is plant chemistry journals. Most veterinarians know about these non-nutritive amino acids as well, because if, a, if an animal on a farm is fed too many of the plants that contain these non-nutritive amino acids, they'll get sick. It, this is known in the veterinary literature. They know about this stuff. And if, a, if, a, if an animal is just allowed to graze on pasture on hundreds of acres, then they'll just naturally avoid eating too many of these plants. Uh, but if, if they're in a feedlot and we just shove food in their face, they don't have a choice. If they, if they don't want to starve to death, they've got to eat what they're given. And it's been discovered in veterinary science decades ago that if you force feed them too much of these uh, non-nutritive amino acid containing plants, they get sick with known veterinary conditions. And so there's, in every single article, both in the phytochemistry journals and the veterinary journals, they'll say something like, this looks like this is a big deal. Uh, this deserves further research. This demands further research. In one case, that was the language used. But in every case, they say, this is probably a big deal. We should research this more. But for some reason, there's no more research ever done on the subject. Many of Some of these articles are back from 1956 in which they say, hey, this looks like a big deal. We should really look into this more. But then no one looks into it. And I have a theory as to why. I think it's because most researchers are trying to find a pill or an injection or an infusion that they can get a patent on and make millions or billions of dollars from. Nobody's really interested in reversing autoimmune conditions for free. I seem to be one of the very few people in the world interested. I, I don't want you to pay me a million billion dollars to reverse your autoimmune condition. I just want to help you live a productive life and not be crippled by an autoimmune con condition 
that leaves you shackled to expensive medications and living a life that's not as full as it could be otherwise. The first non-nutritive amino acid I'm gonna talk about is cannabinine. Now, this is an amino acid, but it is an amino acid that mammals don't use to make proteins with. We can't use it appropriately. But the problem is, is that cannabinine can actually trick your transfer RNA when it's in the process of making your proteins. And then also uh, kind of fact checking the protein making process, cannabinine looks so much like L-arginine. And I'm gonna put a little picture up here so you can see how closely uh, shaped they are. It tricks your transfer RNA and it, it winds up that, that the cannabinine actually gets misincorporated into your proteins. And the more cannabinine rich foods you eat, the more cannabinine you've got floating around in your bloodstream that your body can use to miss incorporate into your proteins. Now, proteins have a specific shape and your immune system knows what that shape looks like. And so your immune cells are constantly in your circulation. They get out in your tissues and crawl around. They're constantly looking for foreign proteins. When you have a lot of cannabinine that's been misincorporated into your protein structure, your immune system is gonna see that your protein has got an odd shape. It's not shaped like your protein should be shaped. And that is going to trigger an immune response to your own proteins. You see how that makes sense? And so it's not that your immune system is too strong. It's not that it's stupid. It's, been, it's literally looking at some of the proteins in your body, maybe in your thyroid gland, maybe in your endometrium, maybe in any other part in your joints, in your cartilage, and it's saying that's not a protein that should be here. That protein has a funny shape. So it starts to attack that protein. That is autoimmune inappropriate response. That's an autoimmune condition. And these 10 autoimmune conditions that I talk about, your immune system is attacking a specific tissue in your body. And all tissues in our body are made up of proteins, which are all made up of amino acids. And if they're made up of the, the amino acids they should be made up of, your immune system goes by, looks at it and says, yep, that's a normal protein, no problem there, I'm not gonna attack that. But when you've got proteins that are full of cannabinine, your body's much more likely to attack that, an immune response that's inappropriate, but yet to your immune system, it's looking at that protein saying, that ain't right, right there, I'm gonna attack that and get that out of here. That's a foreign invader perhaps. Cannabinine is found in every legume that's ever been studied and looked for. Now, it's definitely been found in alfalfa seeds and alfalfa sprouts. And there's documented cases of people who develop obvious autoimmune conditions if they're eating too many alfalfa seeds or alfalfa sprouts. This is known in science. But the problem is, is that there are so many legumes out there. And if you don't know what that is, look that up. It's a huge amount of the human diet. If one legume has got cannabinine in it, enough that it can actually stimulate autoimmune conditions in animals and in humans, then shouldn't we look for cannabinine in every legume? And that's gonna take 20 or 30 years and you don't have time for that as you, you, know, you suffer from an autoimmune condition. So what if you stopped eating every plant that had cannabinine in it or could potentially have cannabinine. I think that's probably a pretty good strategy on your part. The next non-nutritive amino acid I wanna tell you about is azetidine 2 carboxylic acid. And that sounds like a chemical, but it's an, it's an amino acid. It just doesn't have a formal name. Now, this is found in sugar beets. It's found in garden beets. It's found in table beets, both the greens and in the beet itself. It's also found in chives, in garlic, in onions, in shallots, in leeks. All these things contain azetidine to carboxylic acid. Now, what's the big deal about that? Well, here's the big deal about that. If you look at this little structure, azetidine to carboxylic acid looks strikingly like proline, which is an amino acid that your body should use to make proteins out of, okay? Now again, your transfer RNA can be fooled 
by azetidine, 2 carboxylic acid, and then it can be misincorporated as proline, but it's really not proline. Your body mistakes it for proline and then builds your proteins that make up your tissues, that make up your thyroid, that make up your ovaries, that make up your joints. And so now you've got this misrepresented amino acid in your protein, which makes your protein be misshaped. Remember I said earlier, proteins get this unique shape from the amino acids they're made up of. And so if, if you're supposed to have proline in this, in this protein, but instead you've got acetidine 2 carboxylic acid in there, that protein is gonna be improperly shaped. And when your immune system cells are flowing around in your bloodstream and crawling around in your tissues, and they find this misshapen cell, or yeah, the, the cell is gonna be made of a misshapen protein, they're gonna attack that. They're gonna say, this is not part of us. This is a foreign protein. I'm gonna attack this. And I think that, and like I said earlier, there are 600 different non-protein making amino acids that have been found so far in plants. And I think this is a great reason that so many people benefit from eating a carnivore diet that consists only of animal meat and animal products. I think that's why these 10 autoimmune diseases get so much better on a carnivore diet is because slowly but surely as you replace your tissues, you're replacing proteins and you're replacing amino acids, they are now built with actual L-arginine. And so that the protein is now the normal shape that it should be, and your immune system recognizes it. Oh, that's L-arginine, that's a normal shape protein. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna attack that anymore. Same goes for proline. When you start eating a, uh, a carnivore diet, you're not being exposed to these 600 non-nutritive amino acids that come from plants anymore. You're just eating real amino acids that you should build protein from, and one of these is proline. So when you stop eating a plant-based diet that, that is rich in azetidine 2 carboxylic acid, and you start eating an animal-based diet that's rich in proline, then you're making your proteins out of proline again, like you should be. And when your immune system cells come by, they look at that protein and say, yep, that's shaped exactly right. That's part of us. We're not going to attack that anymore. Remember two things, I've put all the research down in the show notes below in case you doubt anything I'm saying. I never want you to blindly believe me or blindly believe anybody. I want you to do the research yourself. And if you're suffering from an autoimmune disease, you have the motivation to actually look into this stuff because it could literally change the quality of your life and perhaps even lengthen your life. The second thing is, is that much, much more research needs to be done about these 600 non-nutritive, non-proteinogenic amino acids that occur in plants. It's a known fact that many plants use these amino acids as toxins, as defenses against insects and herbivores and other things that eat them. Why would we think that humans are somehow special? They probably don't wanna be eaten by us either, and they're putting these non-nutritive proteins, which are mistaken for nutritive proteins, essential proteins, non-essential protein, or amino acids, and are actually become part of our protein structure, thus leading to autoimmune disease. Now, I know I've covered a lot of new information in this video that you probably never heard before. Uh, as of two weeks ago, I'd never heard of this stuff either, but now I'm fascinated and really intrigued that it may be the non-nutritive amino acids in plants that are leading to the epidemics of autoimmune conditions, including these 10 autoimmune diseases that I think will greatly benefit from a carnivore diet. Now I've got a list of videos about the carnivore diet that'll pop up either here or here at the end of this video. Read these articles, be thinking about this, talk to your doctor, and I would highly recommend that you start a 90-day trial of a carnivore diet. If it doesn't help at all, what have you lost? You've just eaten lots of nutrient dense, delicious food. And you can go back to eating your old diet if you don't notice any improvement after 90 days. Every time I uncover new nutrition and medical research and evidence and information like this, I'm gonna make a video about it. So if you haven't already done so, please take a second and click that subscribe button and the little bell button right beside it so that every time I post one of these new videos, you'll be one of the very first people to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.